Welcome back to the RAS, ACS, and Behind the Knife journal cast on Landmark Papers in Surgery. I'm Austin Williams, a general surgery resident from Lankanaw Medical Center, and I will be briefly reviewing the Landmark NSABP B32 trial, comparing sentinel lymph node resection with axillary lymph node dissection in clinically node-negative patients with invasive breast cancer. Prior to the mid-90s, axillary lymph node dissection for breast cancer was performed as standard of care in order to maximize regional control and survival. Sentinel lymphadenectomy, or the resection of the first lymph node or nodes draining the primary tumor, was developed in order to minimize the morbidity of axillary dissection, effects such as lymphedema, limited range of motion, and pain and other sensory deficits, while providing equivalent oncologic outcomes. The NSABP B32 protocol was designed as a multi-center, non-blinded, randomized controlled trial that sought to determine if the oncologic outcomes were indeed equivalent with an associated decrease in morbidity. Patients were eligible for the B32 study if they were female and had clinically node negative invasive breast cancer. The primary outcomes assessed were overall survival, disease-free survival, and regional disease control. Importantly, all surgeons were trained on protocol for sentinel lymphadenectomy, which included using dual tracer and identifying an axillary node as sentinel if it was blue, hot, or clinically positive at the time of the surgery. The authors audited technical outcomes, which were excellent, and reported elsewhere. From May 1999 through February 2004, the study enrolled 5,611 adult women with clinically node-negative invasive breast cancer. Patients underwent stratified randomization according to age, tumor size, and whether a lumpectomy or a mastectomy was planned, to either group 1, in which they underwent sentinel lymphadenectomy, followed by a completion axillary lymph node dissection, or to group 2, in which they underwent sentinel lymphadenectomy alone. According to the protocol, patients in group 2 who had positive sentinel lymph nodes also underwent completion axillary lymph node dissection. Analysis focused on 1,978 women in group 1 and 2,011 women in group 2 who had negative sentinel nodes. The cohorts were well-balanced according to randomization factors. Mean follow-up time was 95.6 months in each group. Follow-up was excellent, with 99.9% .9 of patients having complete follow-up data. Within the cohort of patients with negative sentinel nodes, there was no difference in overall survival, as can be seen in the Kaplan-Meier curve here. The eight-year estimated survival was 91.8% in the axillary dissection group and 90.3% in the sentinel lymphadenectomy group. Related to recurrence, regional lymph node recurrences as first events were rare in both groups, 4% in group 1 and 7% in group 2. They were not significantly different from one another. Looking at it more closely, only 1% of patients in group 1 had an axillary recurrence as their first event, compared with 4% in group 2. There was also no difference in disease-free survival between the groups. Estimated 8-year disease-free survival was above 80% for each group. The forest plot shown here demonstrates that there is no difference between the two groups in in-breast recurrence, contralateral breast cancers, and recurrence in local, regional, and distant sites. A summary analysis also shows no difference in overall events between the groups. The NSABP B32 study demonstrated similar overall survival, disease-free survival, and regional control in clinically node-negative patients with invasive breast cancer who underwent sentinel lymphadenectomy when compared with those who underwent axillary lymph node dissection. Results published in a separate manuscript highlighted the reduction in postoperative morbidity in the sentinel lymphadenectomy group. 
Thus, B32 has made sentinel lymphadenectomy standard of care for routine axillary staging in patients with early stage breast cancer. I'm Austin Williams, a general surgery resident at Lankanaw Medical Center. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach me by email or on Twitter at ADWilliams5. Thanks for listening.